Boy, do we have a, a show for you today. I just can't believe that we've been able to uh, get the guest. This is uh, the Invest Visible Guest Show with David, and um, we have two guests today that are just unbelievable. We never thought in a million years uh, we would get these kind of quality people in the first month. Uh, that we broadcast. So anyway, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Gordon uh, B. Hinckley and uh, Thomas S. Monson. Why they use the initials uh, in the middle, I really don't know, but it could be one of the questions we ask them. I have uh, prepared a uh, large group of, of questions, gentlemen, that uh, many of the viewers out there have sent in and would like to, uh, your best answers and your best oh yeah I'll shake hands got Gordon yes okay and Tom, Thomas fine great thanks again for coming and as usual um, they have interpreters with them who has sign language and uh, she will be giving me the answers so that their voices uh, continue to be hidden uh, because um, there's many reasons they've told me that they could ex get excommunicated for giving this kind of information uh, and interview information. So, let's get started and we'll go back and forth between the two like a little bit of a uh, 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 debate and uh, let's see what they have to say. Let's start with, um, uh, I think it's President or Gordon, Mr. Hinckley, uh, the Hinkster, I mean, <laughs> There are many things on the internet uh, that I've noticed, uh, and on some Mormon, uh, like recovery from Mormonism.com, uh, that you're called the Hinkster. Um, are you are you aware that that is uh, how many many people uh, see you? Uh, interpreter, please. <laughs> interpreter, could you gently kind of wake him up? Oh, he's awake now. Okay. Uh, okay, Gordon, <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, where are you? You're on, <laughs> you're on the invisible guest. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'll shake hands with you. Yes. G great, great. The invisible guest. Um, let me ask you, um, are you aware that many people call you the Hinkster? Uh, he is saying uh, he has heard that rumor. Okay. And can you imagine or can you explain to our audience here why you might be called the Hinkster? Uh, no, not at all. It may be a, um, a compliment, I'm not sure, okay? Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Hinkley, let me, let me go back and just ask a few questions. One of them is that uh, I understand uh, you worked for the railroad uh, when you were a young man. Yes, yes, he said yes, uh, he did. And that was a very um, good job and hard paying, hard working. Okay, well that's great. Um, how, how long did you work for the railroad? A significant amount of time? Okay. Could you put that maybe in years? He, he's thinking, he's thinking. Uh, it, it's complex, but I think it was around a year or so. Okay. Okay, so you work for the railroad for maybe about a year or so? That is correct, she says. Okay. Um, and you died, I think, when you were over 90. Is that true? It is. And you've only been resurrected for a couple of days. That's true, too, he said. Well, during that time between the one year and the 90 years, how many years did you work for the Mormon church? Uh, he says the math would show right at about 89 years. Uh, in other words, you didn't have a job for 89 years? Uh, my job was uh, talking to Jesus and, and, and what? Telling, telling the people, t telling the people what Jesus wanted, which was uh, mostly tithing, okay? And uh, did you do pretty well as the president of the Mormon Church, getting uh, funds? Oh yes, yes. In fact, so much that one one day, when Jesus was 
was speaking with me, instructing me, I'm sorry, instructing me, he said he didn't have um, a mall. He was king of the universe. I'm sorry, it's just a little bit. He was king of the universe and owned everything, but no one ever built him a mall. And so he commanded me, like he did Joseph Smith, to build a mall. Okay, Mr. Hinckley. And this, this mall that Jesus wanted, um, how much money? Uh, Mr. Monson, uh, Mr. Monson, we'll get to you in just a <laughs> Sir, sir, we'll get to you just a minute. But when I said, how much <laughs> did this mall cost, um, you kind of jumped out of your chair. Because it looks like maybe the hangster <laughs> handed you maybe a white elephant. But we're going to let <laughs> you speak for yourself here in just a minute, but we kind of wanted to get some background from uh, from the Hinkster on how this mall uh, got invented. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Hink uh, not Hinkster, Mr. Hinkley, uh, you didn't have a job for 89 years. Jesus told you to build them all, and you're saying uh, we had in the church plenty of money, uh, we were paid well, and we had billions we were sitting on. <clears throat> well, Mr. Mr. Hinkley. If you had billions that you were sitting on, being a church, a lot of people out here have said, well, why didn't you, why didn't you give that or help the poor people to get clean water and the, the kids to get medication and the, the hell with the poor? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me save Mr. Hinckley's ass. <laughs> The hell with the poor? <laughs> Do you mean that maybe the poor weren't as important as the mall, Mr. Hankley? That's what he meant to say. That's what he didn't mean to the hell with the children. Okay, so now uh, the, the mall is almost done. It's four and a half billion dollars, maybe going to be five. And um, you're proud of that. He says, yes. Uh, we, we built it in downtown Salt Lake City where the ghetto <laughs> is okay and Pioneer Park will be rejuvenated and the homeless may not be there as much okay isn't it true that the the building itself has condos in it, it it's a mall but it has condos that is correct and the condos were 500 a half a million dollars uh, well <laughs> He, uh, Mr. Ma uh, Thomas, <laughs> good Lord, sit down. I know he may have handed you <laughs> a nightmare, but let's let the man speak. Gordon, a half a million dollars for a two-bedroom condo. Yes, that's what Jesus said. <laughs> Are you aware less than 25% of those condos have sold, and most of them have sold between 150 and 300? Uh, you're right, <laughs> that was a ripoff. <laughs> he says, what? The, the what? The economy? <laughs> Wait a minute, we are not going to use the F word on this program. So you cannot say the fucking economy. That is off limits beyond our audience. So well, let me interpret that, that you did not expect the economy to turn down. That's what he said. The economy was not supposed, supposed to turn down. And so now, the Mormon church is kind of uh, head over heels uh, in debt and, and future uh, um, responsibility and income to keep this mall running. Yes. Now, isn't it true? I just... Uh, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> this is not a daycare center. Okay, sit down or I'm going to put a seatbelt on you like Boyd K. Packer wears at conference. Oh, he's, he's promised that he will wait for his turn. Now... Mr. Hinckley, uh, let me ask you, we're, we're kind of skipping around here, but let me ask you, do you remember buying the Hoffman papers? I think his name was Mark Hoffman. <laughs> we do not say the asshole. <laughs> You're supposed to be a prophet. You're supposed to be an example. Okay, you are an example, but he's still an asshole. I can't take it. Hinkster, you're a funny dude, man. You are one funny dude. Okay, you bought from uh, Mark Hoffman, who currently is down at Point of the Mountain in a federal prison, a letter 
and you paid over a million dollars of the tithing funds of the poor Mormon people who were sending you their money. Uh, that is correct. And the, the letter that you were buying, you thought was the Salamander letter. Uh, that is correct, too. Now, again, Mr. Hinckley, we, we in the public don't know a lot of this kind of stuff because it's sacred. <laughs> Not secret, but it's sacred. The Salamander letter. Can you give us an idea of what that was? Okay, the interpreter is saying um, it is a letter that was written by uh, a church authority indicating that a salamander, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, a salamander fish? Yes, a salamander fish, uh, go ahead Mr. Hinckley, um, help Joseph Smith either write the Book of Mormon or find the gold plates. Now, now, <laughs> Hinkster, <laughs> Jeez. let me see if I've got this right for our people. You're saying that maybe a fish dictated or helped Joseph Smith in some way, and the reason, sir, <laughs> that you were buying this letter, okay, you weren't sure, uh, do that one, Okay, you weren't sure it was a true salamander letter, but the reputation of the church uh, was worth a million dollars to capture the letter and put it in, in oh, the vault in the mountain that you, you own. Okay, now let's see if we can just kind of end this <laughs> because I can see. Uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> could you wake him up? <laughs> Jeez, what an interview. Wake him up again. Just do one. Oh, Mr. Hinckley, we were talking about the salamander letter, okay, and the reason you bought it was to, to defend the, the reputation of the church that fish did not talk with Joseph Smith, only angels and God. Okay. Now, it seems to me that as a spin-off or the end of that story, um, isn't it true that someone left a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, no, no, sir, I'm not laughing at you. you. I know you, no, you did not leave a bomb. No, there's no day nights. That's just an ugly rumor. But someone evidently left a bomb, sir, at one of your bishop's house, <laughs> like a Halloween trick, and it blew him up and killed him? I see. And you never testified in the court, and none of the, the authorities of the Mormon church ever t uh, testified. Let, let Thomas sleep. It's okay. We're not talking to him right now. Just let him sleep, man. It's okay. Okay, so that's the end of the Hoffman story that uh, he killed or somebody killed with a bomb one of your bishops. You spent a million dollars and you didn't get the money back. Okay. Now, a lot of people have said to me to ask you, if you are a prophet of Jesus Christ, why didn't Jesus come down and go, Gordy? Man, that's a fake letter. Don't spend my people's money. Uh, 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 Mr. Hankley, <laughs> could you sit down? I know it's a hard question. It's a hard question for me to ask. He, he says it's a hard question for him to answer. Okay, sir, sir, I have all the respect in the world for you. I think you can see that. Why didn't Jesus come and say Gordon or Hingster or Gordon B or President? Don't buy that letter. It's stupid. Okay, he's responding uh, in a typical Mormon way, evidently, that uh, he, he was being tested as the prophet, and uh, Jesus knew, but Jesus didn't tell him because Jesus wanted him to have faith in Jesus, and it was a test. And, and sir, can we ask you, did, did you pass that test? Uh, not very well. <laughs> Uh, you were pissed. No, you are pissed. Okay. Hey, whatever you say, whatever you say, it's okay. You are still pissed. Okay. Uh, could you just uh, sit for a second, and we'll we'll talk to. Uh, the, uh, could you? <laughs> could you wake up, Mons? <laughs> okay. Gor hey, Gordon. You can go to the bathroom here in our studio anytime you want. Could we get someone to escort? <laughs> Gordon to the bathroom, and would you, you wake up Tommy, he's on TV, we've got to, 
Oh, oh, Mr. Monson, thank you for uh, joining us, sir. And uh, we've asked uh, Gordon Hinckley, uh, yeah, well, yes, we know he's called the Hinkster. <laughs> uh, yes, sir, and you have every right to call him the Hinkster because um, he did hand you <laughs> that white elephant $4 billion mall in the middle of a recession. Uh, sir, sir. If you don't mind to stay seated, if you just speak, I'll let the people know. <laughs> All right, kick the wall. <laughs> we don't care. We have the money. We can fix it. Just kick it again. It's all right, man. Hey, we want you to get your feelings out. Uh, he says he's, he's mad as a wet hen. Okay, a wet hen. Okay. Uh, a Thomas, a Tommy, a <laughs> president, I don't know, prophet. But let me, let me ask you a couple of questions that uh, are, are being asked right now in the Mormon church. Um, you kind of lost your ass on that mall, didn't you? Oh, sir, go ahead, kick the wall. <laughs> I, I don't care. My producers are going to have to uh, pay for that. Oh, shit. Try not to throw stuff, okay? Because it's people and equipment in here, okay? All right. Thomas, thank you for sitting down again. I guess the mall... Uh, oh, shit, he jumped up again. Okay, I won't say mall. Oh, shit, good Lord, he's going crazy. I won't say M-A-L-L. -L. Ooh, now he's sitting down. Okay. okay. Uh, Tommy, uh, the construction project... In downtown Salt Lake, in the ghetto that overlooks Pioneer Park and the homeless shelter, um, is not something, it appears, <laughs> from our wall <laughs> and the crap you've thrown around here, that you're real happy that, that, that the hangster gave that to you. Uh, to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Okay, now, let me ask you a little bit about yourself, because again, the, the, the people are just fascinated with the Mormon Church. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the reports is that uh, when you uh, was th were down at BYU, perhaps not a student, uh, but as an authority, uh, you were in charge of a homosexual uh, experiment uh, trying to get gay men not to be gay. Uh, that is correct. Jesus uh, appeared to me and said erections were evil things in front of other men. But not in front of women. Okay, hey, hey, that's that's your doctrine, that's your religion. We're all going to accept that. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about this experiment that I guess you set up, or at least you were director of and in charge? Uh, yes, I'm very, very proud of the uh, electrical shock <laughs> that... <laughs> uh, Tom, no, Tom, I'm not laughing at you. No, I'm not laughing at you. You're saying uh, the electrical shock... Uh, the wires that you uh, shot uh, the men who uh, were looking at other men in the lab and uh, their erections went away. Well, does that come to a conclusion, sir? Do you have some kind of a, uh, uh, an abstract or conclusion for that experiment? Uh, yes, he does. Uh, th these gays are the scum, uh, scab, scum, of the world, and uh, we hate them as a uh, as a religion. And uh, if they get married or uh, are allowed to be married, the world uh, will come to an end. And uh, we are trying to make a marriage between our pro proclamation between uh, one man and one woman. Well, well, Thomas, thank you very much. I think that's uh, a clear. Uh, <laughs> very clear a doctrine of how you feel about the gays and you did put a proclamation out to the world that marriage was between one man and one woman is that correct yes he said that's correct now can I follow up with the Mormon definition of marriage uh, in 1845 1850 right through Joseph Smith and Brigham Young uh, it wasn't one man and one woman was it no no sir sir, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you can be a little excitable, and I'm not going to say um, I'm not going to say that word again. Okay, I'm not going to say it. Sit down and just let the people hear the words of a prophet. Now, when the Mormons defined marriage back then, it wasn't between one man and one woman, was it? 
many women are like one woman. It's kind of like the blacks were a quarter uh, of a person back in those days. Okay, so if they were like a quarter of a woman, could a man then be married to one woman, which would make four quarters, and then that would be a family, that would be your definition of the Mormon family back then, and you've changed your definition? Uh, they may... <laughs> They may have been less than a quarter, okay? So, when Brigham Young had 57, if they were like 1 57th of value, that would be one woman. Yes, that's how we figure it, okay, sir? So, the Mormon Church hasn't, absolutely, we've not changed doctrine. Uh, we never change doctrine, and we never will. God is the same today as he was yesterday, and as he'll be forever. Well, Mr. Monson, I think that's a, a wonderful um, comment. Now, let me ask you, um, there's some, some rumors uh, in general conference uh, broadcast that you are, um, let, me, let me say this gentle, because I'm not going to say, no, I'm not going to say that word. No, no, no stay seated. Um, there's some rumors that some of the stories that you tell, which are certainly uh, inspirational to the Mormons, um, that the fact patterns <laughs> inside those stories may not be exactly accurate. Um, he's saying uh, they're not because I'm old, feeble, <laughs> senile, and I can't remember shit, okay? You know, you're a funny guy, just like the Inkster. You are funny, you know, I like it. And um, someone said that basically um, you uh, and, and uh, Elder Packer, uh, Boyd K, you kind of sit together there in the conference. Uh, y yes, uh, I think most of us know he wears a seatbelt in the chair so he won't fall. And you're right, you're healthier, you don't need a seatbelt yet. Uh, isn't it true that he might become the next prophet of the church and, and the prophet would be wearing a seatbelt in a chair? Uh, that's uh, uh, possible. <laughs> Maybe likely. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, let me, let me ask you just a few more questions. We kind of, you know, don't want to... <laughs> Could you pick Gordon up <laughs> quietly off the floor? It's okay if he sleeps. But not on the damn floor. The camera's going to sweep over there and see his ass. Don't do that shit. Okay, uh, sorry, Mr. Monson. I know, I know, Gordon Gordon has never really been a, uh, a real healthy guy, but uh, he's always comical. He's always comical. Now, let me get to a couple of questions, the last ones here that our audience have asked. You had a, a policy in the Mormon Church where you said, uh, as a phrase, a policy and a procedure, uh, every member a missionary. Yes, our members uh, love the Lord and love us and they obey us and and we did have uh, that philosophy that every member uh, is a missionary. So you're, sir, you're trying to help them uh, bring other people into the Mormon church. Absolutely. <laughs> tithing, <laughs> sir, tithing is a terrible thing to waste. All right. Hey, you can say whatever you want, sir. You are the prophet. You're the prophet. You talk with Jesus. So you can uh, don't quote you on that. You bet. I won't quote you that tithing is a terrible thing to waste. Uh, tithing <laughs> helps you run around in a Learjet. Uh, yeah, the, the Learjet is not owned by the church, but the church puts the gas in it at $1,000 an hour, right? Uh, the Huntsman Corporation, yes, they volunteer the Learjet to you. Now, let me ask you back on this, every member is a missionary. Isn't it true that now um, Jesus has come down to you and basically, uh, yes, he has. I see Jesus uh, on a, per, a, a pretty regular basis. Yes, sir. And he said to you that the overhead of the mall and the salaries of the general authorities uh, are making a very uh, high um, amount of money going out of the church. Uh, yes, that's true. That's what Jesus said to me. And when you counseled with him, what was the decision? Um, that we would take advantage... <laughs> sir, sir, hey, you can say, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> okay, I'll shake hands again. Yes, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. 
okay? Uh, we will take advantage of the poor and the stupid uh, janitors who clean our filthy chapels and, uh, and stake centers and, and temples and will fire their asses. Well, sir, <laughs> sir, you can't say asses. <laughs> family okay okay screw them that's okay <laughs> whatever you want to say we'll just bleep this out as we go okay so Jesus told you to fire all the janitors the poor people that had no education and were hanging on the church paychecks to feed their family and, and to live uh, Jesus wanted them to uh, be fired uh, that's right and my job uh, is to obey Jesus like everybody you bet sir and so, uh, did you fire them all? You bet you. No, don't say. Don't. Y yes, sir, we did. Okay, no ass. No ass stuff. Okay. And now, um, you have many prominent people in the church. You have some dentists and attorneys and, and uh, CPAs and uh, blue collar people that own their own businesses. Um, how did you decide to clean uh, the restrooms? They just leave them? Of course not. The house of the Lord is always clean okay how the members of the church the wards in the stake we gave janitorial equipment to to ease their burden to be blessed <laughs> okay uh, president monson how are the members of the church blessed now we have a new uh, revelation uh, that Every member is a a a, a, J, J, a janitor. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hey, every member's a janitor. Okay, and that saved us millions and millions of dollars. Yes, sir. And uh, it's money that uh, we're able to use to put our kids through BYU free. Uh, well, sir, most kids don't go to BYU free. Uh, Oh, the authorities' kids can go to BYU free. Okay. Okay. And our life insurance, health insurance, and our salaries went up even during a depression showing that the church is true. Okay, so that's a sign the church is true. Your six-figure incomes uh, climbed up a little bit. Uh, not a little bit. <laughs> Quite a bit. Okay. Okay. We're just reporting here. We're just reporting what you say. So now there's no um, janitorial cost. Yes, Jesus was inspired. Yes, I would say he was. Uh, and the dentist uh, can clean a toilet and wash his hands and work in people's mouths. Yes, I, I think so. I think so, sir. Now, the finances of the church, some people have had some questions on, and I just wanted to ask you, <laughs> Uh, no, well, you broke the arm of the chair. You don't have to grab it that hard, you know. It was a good chair. Uh, these are hard questions. Okay, well, <laughs> let him break the chair. I don't care. Watch out. Don't step on the hangster. Good grief. We're going to get a lawsuit here. Come on. Common sense. Uh, yes, the finances of the church, sir. Isn't it true that you just sold uh, 35,000 acres of land in Salt Lake City uh, to Kennecott Copper. Uh, yes, we wanted to help out private companies in our area. But sir, isn't it true that the Mormon Church needed the money? Uh, we never need money. Uh, even Joseph Smith printed his own, so we're not worried. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, also, I think you sold over 500 radio and television uh, stations here in the last six months. Uh, that figure uh, is debated. We're not sure if it was 498 or if it <laughs> was 500. Yes, sir. I, I think that's an important point. Uh, but you did sell some TV stations uh, to raise some money. Uh, yes, yeah, that, that's basically true. Now, let me ask you a couple of other questions here, sir. The uh, Desert News. Uh, isn't it true that they had to move out of their building and go into a cheaper building and laid off 60, 80 people? Uh, I don't work for the Desert News anymore, but I've heard that rumor. Well, yes, sir. And uh, it's also true, sir, uh, I think that um, the uh, beneficial life insurance, which has been one of the roots 
and foundations of the Mormon financial system uh, went bankrupt. Uh, well, that, that is up to question two. I don't know if chapter 11 or chapter 7 are both called bankruptcy, um, but we, we saved enough money to pay off the, the beneficiaries of the, who had policies. Yes, sir. I'm not sure if you answered the question. I'm oh, you, that's okay. You can break the other arm. If these questions are kind of tough, you know, it's okay. Please. Let Gordon roll over. It's okay, you know. He's going to be all right. Um, so basically, the, the insurance company went bankrupt, didn't it? Uh, you could say that. Okay, sir, I, I guess I am saying that. Now, now KSL TV uh, in the Salt Lake area used to be the number one. Uh, wait, oh, <laughs> it's always the number one. Well, yes, sir. My, my question is, I have seen the reports that Channel 2 now has taken over the viewership uh, as the number one position. Uh, KSL is not in number one anymore. Uh, our statistics don't show that. Our actuaries and the way we uh, pre uh, present um, the, the, the amounts of most things uh, are at our own discretion. Yes, sir. So you think KSL is still the number one station. Uh, we certainly do. We have a, a burning, a burning in our breast, uh, not breast, uh, in our bosom. In our bosom that, that we think that's true. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, let me ask you again on the uh, financial conditions. Uh, isn't it true uh, that you have lowered uh, the amount of money that a missionary lives on now um, on a mission for the Mormon Church? Uh, they didn't need that. Uh, they, they live like kings out there. Free housing, okay, free housing, okay. And uh, you also basically took their cars uh, away from them. Not every car, um, most. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, are they still allowed to ride bicycles? You bet you're, okay. Oh, don't, don't say ass. Don't say ass. It's a family show. Okay, try it. A little control, you know, a little control. Uh, so you did uh, let them ride their, their bikes. Okay, that's good. Uh, do they all still live in individual apartments? Oh, they don't live in... No, the members of the church have not only been uh, blessed with janitorial service, but they now uh, house our missionaries out in the field. It's a real blessing uh, unless the missionary gets in trouble with their young girls. Yes, sir. I, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Now, isn't it true that um, the Mormon church basically uh, hates the gays? Uh, we don't hate the gays. Uh, watch my lips. We love all people. Okay. And to prove that, sir, um, in Proposition 8 in California, the church and many members of the church who donated extra for trying to stop um, a civil, or civil marriage for uh, gays, spent millions of dollars of the people's money um, to um, stop Proposition 8. Jesus told me that, that uh, gays should not marry and have equal rights, that they are a mistake from uh, our creation, and that they could all change to heterosexuals uh, if we applied the electric probes to their penis. Well, okay, if that uh, is your philosophy. Now, one other question here on discrimination, because a lot of people, you know, talking about a little bit of discrimination. Discri discrimination, hell, we love everyone. Okay, okay. Um, isn't it true that the blacks uh, were not allowed to have the priesthood or go to the temple uh, before 1978? I don't, I don't know if it was 78, yes sir, uh, let me, let me kind of inform you that the, uh, the, the computer, the internet says it was 1978, uh, sir, sir, oh, whoa, whoa, we can't, we can't say fucking computer, internet, <laughs> okay, you may feel it's an evil, evil thing, and when Google hits 2 million hits in 2.7, the points of a second, uh, that all those people, yes, they're all anti-Mormon and they hate us because we are the true church. Our people are instructed to never use the internet. 
there's too much anti Mormon uh, doctrine, uh, or not doctrine, too many anti Mormon sites that are there, and our people will quit paying tithing. <laughs> okay? That makes sense, sir. That's kind of what the world is, is seeing that the Mormons are not allowed to have uh, outside information. No, they don't. When I talk with Jesus, I'm talking for the God, and their only job, the Mormon people, is to obey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I think that most um, Americans and, and people in the world uh, believe that that's what you believe. Now, let me kind of... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tommy, don't kick Gordon. He's asleep peacefully. <laughs> you can't say fucking mall. This is a family show, man. I know you said we would tell you you could say anything you want. I know that Gordy <laughs> gave you that white elephant and and you wish you wish to God <laughs> that he had died sooner. <laughs> I bet you do. I bet you do. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you're as poor as a, as a, as a church mouse. <laughs> you're not exaggerating. Okay, okay, a church a Mormon church mouse? Big, okay, Mormon church mouse. Well, Mr. Uh, Thomas B. Marsh, or Mon, I'm sorry, Monson. <laughs> uh, a little slip of the tongue there, sir. Uh, well, if you'll just <laughs> sit down, I'll wrap this up. <laughs> You can't say you're going to kick Gordy's ass. You can't say that. Stop it. Prophets don't do that. Okay, well maybe Joseph Smith did, but modern prophets don't kick other prophets' ass. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've just been very privileged today to have uh, Thomas Mar, uh, Mar <laughs> Thomas Ma Monson. And uh, the Hankster, <laughs> oh, the, oh, the Hankster's waking up. Okay, <laughs> Tommy, you kicked him in the head. Okay, and uh, and brother uh, Hankster, he he's awake now. He's a little confused, but he's going to the bathroom again. And uh, we are proud to have them here. I hope that they've uh, been uh, fruitful and uh, informative of a little bit of the interworkings of the Mormon Church. And we want to thank them, and hopefully uh, they may come back for an additional interview. Thank you, Jim. Oh, to shake hands, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, I don't need to shake Gordon's hand. He's in the bathroom. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Appreciate you guys. Bye-bye.